Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be focusing on the market. From buy orders to sell orders to taxes and everything else in between. Despite what people would lead you to believe market trading or trading the market in EVE is not particularly difficult. So the giveaway for this video will be a billion isk and that will be drawn on the 17th of July 2020. In order to be eligible for the giveaway, you'll need to be subscribed and leave a comment in the comments section with your in-game name. In the last few months, the EVE market has changed quite radically from when it was first introduced. For the last 16 years, pretty much, other than some skills being added in about 2006, not a great deal had changed. So I suppose the, uh, the overall question is, can you still make decent ISK by market trading? And the answer to that question is yes. Pretty much most items in EVE that are traded on the market have a spread between them. That's the difference between the buy and the sell. Now, obviously, the bigger the spread, the more risk you're going to make. So if we take a look at the highest buy order, which is 600,000, and the lowest sell order of 700,000, obviously the split between there is 100,000 ISK. So as we can see, I've just amended the buy order, which has taken me to the top of the list. So as we can see, the range is 1, and I am currently at the, or that buy order is at the perimeter tranquility trading tower. Now the reason I'm doing it here is because fees, etc. are lower. We'll cover that in a bit. But for this part of the video, that has now taken me to the top, and anybody that sells it within that range, the items will come to me and into the, my inventory in the area that they sell it. So I booted Eve back up this morning to find that the order that I put on for the 200mm auto cannons had been filled in two and a half hours. Now that will net me, after taxes, about 8 million ISK, which doesn't sound a great deal and really isn't. However, this can be replicated over 10, 15, 20 different items and is, as I said, a very passive way of generating income. I literally haven't had to do anything. So the only two points that you control through this entire process is your entry point and your exit point. Your entry point wants to be when the market is close or on its way to its most depressed point and your exit point wants to be at a point where obviously it's pretty much at its highest or is an area that you are willing to take profit knowing that the market could drop before it gets to what you could class as a high point. So basically it's a lot easier to buy items when there's a, an excess supply and it's a lot easier to sell items when there's an excess demand. Now this can be done relatively passively. As the market continues to drop, eventually your buy order should be filled assuming you haven't set it too low. So as an example, I had a buy order out for Tracking Disruptor 2s. I was paying 980,000 ISK for them. Um, several days later, the market spiked. I hadn't put them back up for sale at that point, but they started to sell for 2.5 million ISK. Now, obviously, I dumped as much of my stock on that I had at the time of the tracking disruptors and made quite a sizable profit. It was a 1.5 million isk markup on each of them. As you see there, they're, again, not a huge amount, but nice profit on them, nevertheless. And the reason the price has spiked so much is because all of a sudden there's been a huge demand for tracking disruptors, whether that's due to the, uh, the upcoming Goon test war, potentially. Who knows, but basically tracking disruptors are in high demand at the moment. So as we discussed earlier, there's probably more industrious right now producing tracking disruptor 2s than normal due to the fact that the price is quite inflated. Now, obviously, as these people produce, they will bring them to the market and they will be desperate to sell at the highest price, but that will inevitably drive down the price again. With an oversupply, the crash is likely to be relatively hard and probably mean that you're able to pick up a good number on the way down waiting for the inevitable part for where it turns back round again. So I may be placing another buy order around here to try and take advantage of that inevitable crash. Now you can do this with meta items as well and you'll probably notice the spread between meta items from the buy and the sell is quite considerable. So for this item specifically it's 20 million difference. Now, I don't do meta items because you don't generally get the waves. Obviously, these items can't be manufactured 
although yes here we do have waves but we are over many many months and that would obviously lock up quite a lot of ISK for a considerable amount of time. Now that's not to say that you can't make huge amounts of ISK doing this but you will need to probably camp so basically you'll need to babysit your orders, go through them semi-regularly because there's such a huge spread changing the buy orders that you've got up or the sell order to try and sell. The broker fees are going to obviously start to cut in but it won't be quite as bad um, due to the fact that the spread is 20 million so you do have a little bit of room to play with there. So for people that don't have a lot of ISK sloshing around um, then I would probably recommend doing the faction items due to the spread being so large. Yes, you will have to sit here and so I say babysit your items, but when they do sell, you obviously make a nice chunk of ISK from it. Now, as I've said, I don't often amend my buy and sell orders. I just kind of let the market come back to me. Now, that doesn't mean that it always comes back to me. And as we can see here, in five days' time, my test rats will my order will drop off completely. Now I'm very very close to getting to the top here but I am not going to make it I don't think within the next five days. So I've taken the decision I amended the price I've taken myself to the top. Now the reason I did this is because after the five days I would have dropped off and basically the items would have ended up back in my inventory. At that point in order to re-raise an order it would cost me more in the broker fees and relisting fees than it would do just to relist the item. I don't do as much market trading as I used to in the past um, however I have been finding it quite lucrative to buy the ships that I use for the um, hypernet. Now so I say using the hypernet generally you can make a profit but if you're buying the ships at even less then you're not having to deal with some of the market shenanigans of constantly trying to amend um, buy orders to try and stay relevant etc and you've also got the markup from using the hypernet so as we can see here as per the last video um, these are all ones that I am running each one is at eight nodes and these are all the completed ones I have so far so as previously stated in the uh, the hypernet video you can make an awful lot of ISK from using Hypernet and it is recommended. I've added at the end of this video me opening all them Hypernets if anybody wants to watch. So something else that you can do on the side of trading is basically buy and hold or speculation. So when the announcement was made that there was going to be a mineral shortage and that basically anomalies etc that gave out minerals were changing a lot of people bought up a lot of minerals, me included and as you can see back at the time there was minerals were becoming quite depressed with the announcement of the scarcity patch obviously prices started to rise and have risen and risen and they have started to decline somewhat whether they will go back up or not remains to be seen it depends what CCP has in mind but I bought mine for about 360 so I am quite well up on that people in the past again it's reading patch notes and just trying to figure out what the uh, the income uh, the impact of changes may be in the past for instance guidance systems used to be able to buy them from NPC orders at next to nothing um, that obviously changed and then basically guidance systems became incredibly expensive next to it anybody with the foresight to buy guidance systems and stockpile them in mass made an, a huge amount of money we're talking hundreds of billions potentially so every time you raise a buy or a sell order on EVE there are taxes to be paid when selling an item you pay broker fees and sales tax now these can be amended slightly via skills and via standings and also depending whether you are selling in an NPC station or a player owned station in a player owned station the taxes can be set by the person who owns the station in, a, in NPC stations they are fixed so as we said here you've got the two taxes you've got the sales tax and the broker tax for selling and for buying or placing a buy order you have the broker fee again this can be substantially reduced in a player owned station but can't be in a NPC station. The only thing that will affect it in an NPC station are your standings and your skills. 
So the skills that you're going to be wanting are accounting. This reduces the amount of tax that you're going to pay every time you set up an order. Broker relations. This again reduces the tax that you're going to pay unless you're in a non uh, player station, player owned station, not an NPC station. Again, it's very handy to have it at max regardless. And then we have the advanced broker relations, which as we saw earlier, changes the amount that you pay when when amending a current order on this on the um, market so again you're probably going to want this pretty high and especially if you're dealing in faction items you're going to want this you're going to want this max and then we have the following four skills these are the skills that allow you to have more open slots so basically trade that gives you four per level you'll need to train this before you're able to do the retail which gives you eight per skill level then on to wholesale again that gives you 16 and 32 for tycoon i think it gives you a maximum of about 352 slots so in the market tab as you can see we've got total orders uh, maximum orders that you can have any money that you've got in escrow uh, base broker fee transaction tax total sell orders total buy orders and then some of the other skills that i haven't covered to extend your range of where you can modify etc um, if you are heavily thinking or thinking heavily about getting into trading then these can be quite handy also something you really need to be looking at is your faction standings you want this as high as possible I've got mine at 6.3 and I'm not quite maxed so it's either 6.5 that I need to get to or 7 but this will reduce the amount of taxes that you pay on every transaction that you raise there are a few ways that you can raise this I did it through faction warfare you can do it through level 4 missions or there are services where you can pay people to run missions and basically if you're in a gang with them it will increase your rating as well obviously you'll have to pay for that and you can also buy characters off the evo forums that have the required standings so that's a quick introduction to the market um, again what kind of skills you're going to need uh, what you need to be looking at standings etc and everything you really need to get going as with everything, start small, experiment, and then slowly work up to the bigger stuff, the larger orders, etc. Make the mistakes on the smaller orders, and hopefully you'll avoid them on the bigger orders. So the giveaway for this video will be a billion isk, and that will be drawn on the 17th of July 2020. In order to be eligible for the giveaway, you'll need to be subscribed and leave a comment in the comments section with your in-game name. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've not subscribed, then please do leave a comment. I'm always happy to hear from you. I try and answer all the comments. Drop a like if you like the video. Again, any feedback is appreciated, positive or negative. And yeah, as I say, I hope we learned something from that. And I'll probably do more in-depth views going forward. But again, this was just for a general market overview. And now I'm going to open all them hypernets uh, if anybody wants to stop around and watch. It's unedited footage, so yeah, good luck. Uh. One loss. So I say I should win 50%. That's a good start. None for none. Yay. Thank you very much. So that one will go back on the market now. So that's one win, three losses. Oh my word, 50% chance of winning. What's going on? Wow. Holy mackerel. CCP hates me. Oh. Great, I want to practice this back. I could have enough of them already. Here's the money earners. Oh. Come on. 50 50, remember? Thank you very much. Now, again, oh, there we go. Over time, yeah, again, it's like on a roulette wheel, you can get 5, 10, 15 blacks potentially in a row. Your luck will turn. <laughs> I hope. 
let statistics play out over the long run. I run a bad luck, I run a good luck in the future. CCP hasn't got it in for you, it's a computer. Oh, that's my dog groaning. If anybody's ever done invention, as I say, you can quite often get really awful runs, which people are generally very vocal about. But when they get really good runs, no one ever seems to run to the forum screaming that the uh, the mathematics are broken. And people have done huge amounts of studies for the invention, to say you know how often they win, etc. And pretty much what it states in the corner is long term what you're going to come out with. So again, that wasn't the best overall that I've ever had but it wasn't terrible so, I hope you enjoyed that thank you for watching fly safe and see you again soon thank you